Question 3. Spreadsheet. Right, now here it's actually important to read through the notes and the introduction sentence. So we have to use formula and functions for all calculations in the spreadsheet. Only use absolute self cell referencing when it's necessary to ensure that formula are correct when you copy them down. Insert formula and functions in such a manner that the correct results will still be obtained even if changes are made to the existing data. I'll show you where that's important. And should you need to use building blocks, use the allocated space in the spreadsheet. Okay, so open the three tourist spreadsheet, which contains data about the number of tourists to Egypt. Work in the data worksheet. 3.1. Format row one as follows. Merge and center cells A1 to I1. Increase the font size of the text to 13. So we're going to select that and merge and center. Now you'll see if I increase, it increases to 14, not to 13. So I'm going to manually type in 13 and press enter. 3.2. Insert an appropriate date function in cell C3 to extract the month from the date in cell A3. Ensure that the number of the month displays correctly. So the function's name is month. This is the, the date that it's going to use. And just close the bracket, press enter. Now the correct answer is going to be six, but currently this cell is set to display as a date. So I can just change this to general and then it shows me the month is six. 3.3. Enter a function in cell C4 to determine the average number of tourists who visited Egypt per month, column H. Format the answer to no decimal places. So we're going to insert it in C4. We're going to do an average on column H. and format it to display no decimal places. So I'm just going to do that on the ribbon over here, decrease decimal twice. Okay. 3.4. The peak tourist season in Egypt is from October to May, and the off-peak season is from June to September. Use the sum if function in cell C5 to determine the total number of tourists who visited Egypt during the peak season column B in 2019, column G. So we're using column B and column G. Right, so we, they specifically told us to use a sum if, so you can't use something else like a sum ifs, if you prefer that. You can't use that. They specifically told us to use a sum if. Now let's open our function builder and then I'll show you how to do this. So personally, if I have to do a sum if, I prefer starting with a sum range because it's just the easiest one to start with. I know where the numbers are that I need to sum and that's in the column G for 2019. So that's my sum range. Now, criteria is what am I looking for? I am looking for peak season. Okay, now um, I'll talk to you about that just now. And the range where I can find peak is over here in column B. Now, do you remember in the start of the paper they said we have to insert functions in such a way that it would still work if the data changes? Now that's why we have to actually type in the word peak and not just click on a cell that contains peak because if this cell's value changes and suddenly January becomes off peak, um, then my function won't work anymore. So that's why I have to type it in manually. 3.5. The totals in column H should calculate the total number of tourists per month from 2015 to 2019. However, this does not happen as expected for all the months. Insert a formula 
in cell I8 to display the text correct if the total in column H corresponds with the total number of tourists from 2015 to 2019 or else the text error must display. Copy the formula down to the other cells. Right, for seven marks. So there's lots of work to get done over here. All right. Now, in this case, basically what we have to do is here, we have to either display correct or error, depending on what the total is for these cells and if it corresponds to the total in this one. All right. So I'll show you the easier way and the more difficult way. So the easier way would be to do your sum separately in the building blocks area. So to do that, I would do the sum over here and sum these five years together for all the different years. Okay. Then I could do the if. And I'm saying if this total is equal to that total of the sum, then value if true, the answer correct must display. Otherwise, the answer error or the value error must display. OK, and then I need to copy that down and then it shows me which cells have an error. Okay, just so that you know why this is actually giving me an error, it says the formula omits adjacent cells. It's just because it picks up there's a number here and it's worried that this was supposed to be included. Okay, so that's how you would have done it if you did building blocks. If you didn't use building blocks, you could have done the sum in the same cell. So let's see how you would have done that. You would have said if H8 is equal to the sum of these cells. See, or the sum of these cells is equal to H8, either way. And then we've got the same function. So that's how you would do it all in one. Okay, now let's just quickly discuss why this is called a formula and not a function. That's because it actually combines two functions, because there's a sum and an if used together. That's why it's called a formula, and that's why they're asking you use a formula. Um, usually a formula would be something like, um, well, let's just start it with an equals, would be something like that plus that, or, um, you know, just using your regular operators. Um, divide times minus plus. But as soon as you use a function that has a name, that's called, that's a function. Okay. But if you use two functions together, then it's called a formula again. So just so that you know, that's why they actually refer to it as please use a function. 3.6. Use a spreadsheet feature to apply a fill color of your choice to the cell range C8 to G19 when the number of tourists is lower than the average for the five years. So C8 to G19 needs to be some kind of full color if it's lower than the average. So formatting like that is a uh, conditional formatting. So it's lower than the average. So it's below average. And they didn't actually tell us what formatting. So I'm just going to leave it like that. If I had to change it to a custom format, I could just choose something else. But I'm going to make it yellow. There you go. Work in the chart worksheet. Edit the chart to appear as follows. Okay, seven marks. So there are seven things that we have to do. So we need to count what we're doing now. Okay. Right. So chart worksheet. It already says Egypt tourism, but now we have to check what can we find that looks different. So the first thing I see is that one of these um, years, you see the 2015 year actually has a columns and not a line. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. So I'm going to choose change chart type combo. And it's just 2015 that needs to be um, a column. The rest can be line. But the other thing I saw 
was that um, 2019 actually is a line with markers. Do you see that? Okay, so that's at least two things we've done now. So there you go. Line with markers, no, not stacked, just a regular line with markers. There's a difference. Um, stacked means it stacks on top of one another. So there you go. Regular line with markers. Okay. Now, the next thing we need to do, let's see if we can find what else needs to be done over here, is um, the legend needs to be on the side over here. So let's go do that. Legend is on the right. Okay. Getting there. Now at the moment, you'll see my legend still says 2015, 2016, 2017 and year 2019. So I need to change this name to 2018. So I'm going to choose select data. It's not necessary to choose the legend. I can just be on the um, chart anyway. Select data. Click on the legend entry that I need to change. Say edit and go change it to the correct value 2018. Okay. And now it shows me 2018. So now I've done three things at least. Hey, oh, and I've moved the legend. So we're at four. Now, now I need to start looking. What else is there left to do? Um, I can still see these markers are still a bit bigger. Maybe I can make that bigger. But the other thing I see is that my axis, the intervals are correct. It's every 200,000. But this axis has a gap between every thousand. Do you see that? So let's put that back. Let's change that. We're going to right click format axis. And um, I don't see anything at the top here. So that's usually by number where we can change something on the number formatting. There you go. Use a thousand separator. And it's a space. There you go. Right. So now I'm on five things that I know of. We can make this bigger. Um, so I've just clicked on the markers. Fill, marker, marker options, um, type, and we can make that bigger. There you go. Now we can see it clearly. And I don't actually see anything else left to do, hey? There's no lines. Everything else looks the same to me. So um, we can quickly check the memo and check what actually was awarded marks. And let's see. So um, the chart type for 2015 was changed to column. So that counted two marks, the column change and done to correct data. The year legend was changed to 2018, one mark. The legend appears to the right of the chart, one mark. Thousand separated to the vertical axis. Markers inserted on 2019 data only, two marks. Okay, so the fact that we didn't do this on all the lines counted two marks. So the size of the markers was actually not a point, um, was actually not awarded a mark. So that wasn't necessary to make that bigger, but I couldn't really think of anything else left to do. So that was my last guess. But that's basically how you do the chart then, is you try to count how many things you would have to do um, to get that number of marks if there aren't specific instructions underneath the chart. And that's it for question three.